All right, I think this is my first ever live stream on this channel. Figured might as well give it a shot and see how it goes. Got lots of sea lions just munching on the smelt. See eagles flying off there in the distance. Did some recording prior to this, so another camera so I'll be putting some footage out later sounds like we've got a big flock of sandhill cranes that are gonna be flying over us here in a second I was correct Spring Chinook's gonna be a good question. I don't know. I know last I... We're coming back. Last I saw, Oregon is contemplating to not do it. I know they're going to shut down Southern Oregon. But, I think they're going to mess with Northern too much. But again, it'll be like, what was it last year? The quota was caught within like a week or so. Good news though, is that they shut down commercial salmon oh here's something that i've never seen up here before we got white pelicans that have come up i have never seen white pelicans this far west before of course my other camera's in my pocket so hopefully they come back and hang out i'm so used to the dungy brown pelicans that we have at the coast the first time i saw white pelicans i was in yellowstone <laughs> we are always screwed when it comes to going fishing that is a fact man i need a new camera so bad oh hey there fella So the smelt have been, when the sea lines are that close, usually the smelt get pushed right here, right into the bank. And if the wind cooperates, you can actually see them. Yeah. There you go. I think you can see them. Except they're heading the wrong direction. We had an initial run earlier, right before the storms came back. Oh, there we go. There's a bunch of them. Check that out. Had a pretty good run. Uh, seagulls came through. Sea lions were up here. Not very many eagles, though. And then we had that winter storm that came in, and it just stopped. So I was like, oh, crap. Is that all we're going to get? Well, no. There's a lot more coming. 
Look at them. There's so many. And according to Washington Department of Fish and Wildlife, there's no smelt in this river. <laughs> Cuties. But, you know, the government said it, so it must be true. Did you guys see that they saw a wolverine in Portland? That's amazing. That is absolutely awesome. Last wolverine that was spotted west of the Cascades in Oregon was uh, Cascade Locks in like 1991, got hit by a car. And this one here just appears out of nowhere. How's the quality? Is it clear enough? No, it's windy. I come out with my night vision and see if I can see them in the water. Man, there's so many. I don't eat them though. I look at them as bait. I know people eat them. Wouldn't mind trying one of those. Funny, during smelt season it's like oh cool steel lines are here awesome so the salmon season starts though it's like get out of my river <laughs> oh where'd you go that's all blurry For a few three hours of sturgeon fishing a year, yes, exactly. Got some pretty good shots of eagles, so I'll be posting those later. Unfortunately, they're gonna stay on that side of the river, it seems. You'll just imagine their majesticness. Definitely going to be filming more of that. Last year was the first year since I was three years old. I did not go fishing. It was, it really kind of, kind of took a toll on my psyche. Didn't go in the woods. I didn't go anywhere. I didn't do anything outdoors. I hung out with my baby and that was fun. That was cool. I'm not complaining about that at all. But it was weird not, you know, going out and you know, hanging out with Mother Nature, my father-in-law and wife and mother-in-law um, conspired and got me some night vision, cam night vision kind of camera, goggles, goggles that record, and uh, I've been, as you guys have seen, been using those a little bit, and so I've been going up in the mountains and stuff, and man, that fresh air really it's really nice so I will definitely be doing some fishing get some body camera 
stuff and figure that out. Hey, Snooks. <laughs> yes, those pretty river lions. <laughs> That's right, at least they're not here for fall Chinook season. I don't like springers anyway. They're too fat, too fatty. Even though some people like, they prefer springers. They, they like that fishy flavor. The only way you can cook a springer is if you are, you know, barbecuing it <laughs> or something. Drain all the fat somehow. Then they're pretty good, but man, they're. I prefer fall, fall salmon any day. It's so cool to see you, Snooks. I miss you so much. This is blasphemy. See, I knew it. <laughs> Springers are good for smoking. I'll put it that way. Springers are good for smoking. Who doesn't like smoking springers? Uh, you guys can't, oh, you might be able to see them. Got the white pelicans over there across the river. Yeah, yeah. I like. See, we don't really get sockeye here, um, but we got we got cokes. We got kokanee up in um, up in the lakes up here. Of course, they don't get very big. What are springers? Springers are spring chinook salmons. They are the big ones. true they do stay they, they see see i'm not the only one i'm not the only one Let's say blasphemy people do call it blasphemy though <laughs> yeah but the indians can the Indians can keep all the sockeye they want to. Same with the commercial fishermen. Hard to tell the difference between the fish species in a net. Remember? Remember back when we told them that, uh, you know, we, we started paying our $8 Columbia River fee to help subsidize the commercial fishermen to get them off the river? Remember when we did that? Yeah, that was cool. That was fun. It's about as effective as voting for $30 tabs, isn't it? You bet. Oregon still charges that $8 fee, I believe. Washington was like, well, I guess since they're back in the river, the $8 doesn't really go to anything anymore. Oregon found something for it to go to, though. Yeah, can you see him? Can you see him? Well, you know, feeding yourself is a human right. However, apparently, I saw this on the news not too long ago, but apparently we've got some illegals that have a, uh, a love for bald eagle. <laughs> they were like, hey, look at this nice munchy bird. And so they shot him with a gun, ate him, the feds don't care, even though it's poaching and poaching a protected species and using a gun illegally. How many felonies is that? I don't know. But yeah, the feds don't care. It's weird, right? Totally confusing. Who to thunk? But if you or I go out and shoot a bald eagle, even with a legal firearm, that's felony. <laughs> You're being prosecuted to the fullest extent. And if you're using a legal weapon while you're doing it, well, I 
don't know when you'll ever not be uh, in prison. Oop, 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 oop. Got some action here, got some fish jumping. <laughs> Native American gill netting sea lion. We'll make sure though, when you're identifying as your Native American that you're part of the right tribe. Because my Native American self is not allowed to go gill netting because I'm not special. Because where my people come from, we don't have cool rivers that we can just go through nets in all year long even though we have designated seasons and say it's for ceremonial purposes and keep our nets out there and keep selling the fish give you an idea about how awesome our uh department of fish and wildlife is though uh so as you can see we have a very high population of sea lions. Um, earlier, I showed a whole bunch of smelt. You can see some right there. Um, we also have pelicans, eagles. Uh, seagulls are close. But uh, Washington Department of Fish and Wildlife decided that it would be a good time right now to start dumping smolts in the river. <laughs> what? Why? <laughs> Why would you do it now? Why didn't you do it like, I don't know, three days ago when there were no sea lions or eagles or pelicans? Like, why would you do that? I love that sound. The best, if you ever like really want a nice fresh fish and uh, you want to buy it from the natives, go to Cascade Locks and uh, just sit there at the locks where they're, they'll sit there and they'll actually net hand, hand net, and uh, just buy it from him right when he catches it. Otherwise, your fish are going to be very fog eyed and mushy. So cool. Never seen white pelicans here before. When I was little, I got family that live in Cascade Locks. When I was little, I used to go and fish off of the wall there at the locks and it, it's it's one heck of an experience uh it's very cool doing it oh hey there fella hey, you're a big boy how you doing keep waiting for one to just come up here and say hello hey remember during the riots when i was like hey i can't believe i've never been shot with a riot control agent and then all of a sudden it happened can't believe that the whole time I've been sitting here that a sea lion has it, you know, come out to say hello. <laughs> I miss doing live streams.
two eagles in that nest over there. Got, uh, you guys might be able to see these ones. At least they're outlines. Gives you an idea about how many bald, bald eagles are around. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. In that one tree. Oh, I'm sure Dustin does miss all the yelling. <laughs> I don't really understand why sea lions were taken off of the um or are not taken off the endangered or threatened species like we have plenty I'm glad that we have lots of bald eagles though. That makes me happy. White pelicans sure are lazy. They're just sitting there dipping while they're floating down the river. Let's see if I can zoom in anymore so you can. Ah, oh, it's super blurry. Yeah, sun's starting to go down, so it's wind's starting to die down. Smelts are pretty, kind of fascinating to me, to be honest. Just because, I mean, they are, they are weak fish. They are a weak fish. They seem to spawn out really, really fast. And really, really just sporadically. You got some that are already dead. You got some that are, you know, jet black and still moving strong. And when they go up, probably another mile up the river but um right before the river forks i mean there's just tons of dead ones it makes me you know wonder if they spawn out in the main stem here or if uh they go up and float back down i don't know see right here there's a whole mess of them And then there's some that are all like belly up amongst them. Tis a mystery. Got another big group of sea lions working its way upriver. Columbia's right there. See that lighthouse over there that's Good old St. Helens. St. Helens, Oregon. Oh, sure, the wind kicks back up again. It's cool. Yeah, no, I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna be doing that for sure. Unfortunately, a lot of the places I go fishing, uh, previously there hasn't been service. However, 
Um, lately, I have found that I have service in more and more places. Thank you, 5G. <laughs> Super funny for those of you who are on my Telegram channel. Anyway, um, <clears throat> but um, no, yeah, I'm going to do that. I'm going to start doing some plunking. I got uh, uh, my late grandfather-in-law. He gifted me a little boat. So hopefully here in the next month or so, I'm going to get that thing running and uh, take it out. And uh, that'll be fun. That'll be fun. Just sit there, float down the river, you know, put up a, a mount on the side of the boat and just let it go. Just sit there and BS all the time. You guys will just stare at me staring off into space. <laughs> have service down most of the river better not start raining oh yeah it's gonna start raining that's fine phone's waterproof yeah no longer fish on the bank on the at the point fish there so many times for so many years But most of that, I mean, we can blame people, but I think it's the people that uh, screw stuff up for everybody. Ones that go down and make a mess of things. Don't pick up after themselves, tear down trees, and leave all their garbage everywhere. Can you see the rainbow? Not a very good one. Whew. There we go. There's some nature. So tough. Come on. Come on, river lions. Give them a show. That previous group, they're still right there. So this here's a new group. And then there's another group of about five or six that are coming up as well eagles are coming out a little bit more usually when it's raining all the other critters kind of take off and disappear hopefully it's just a little cloud that comes rolling by here and it's not too bad. Can you guys hear the eagles? Is the microphone good enough for that? You hear the sea lions making noise? Local punks, you bet. You bet they were local. 100% they were local. Well, I found out a lot of the dike area, like uh, there's Lions Day Park. They, they've moved Austin's Point. So Austin's Point used to be that, that point, right? There at the mouth, right? Well, now they've moved it uh, downstream <laughs> somehow. And um, it, it's all part of a trust. 
Uh, I didn't know that until I picked it up. I looked on, um, what's it called? Onyx. It's a GPS. It's if you hunt, uh, definitely suggest getting it. Um, it's all part of a trust. Um, and they sold back in like 1990, 1993 or four. Uh, they sold off a lot of that because it, it used to be unbuildable. You could not, the Diking Commission would not allow you to build on the river side of the dike because of flooding, right? <laughs> it's floodplain. Obviously, you can't build on the water side of the dike. Well, uh, they ended up changing their mind and they were selling it off for a thousand bucks an acre. And of course, this is back in the 90s. I mean, so it was still, you know, it was still money, but holy crap. Talk about kicking yourself for not investing. My dad definitely kicks himself for not investing. Now, an acre up there is like, oh, you're talking like half a million dollars, even if it's just bare ground. With a house, I mean, they're all million dollar houses. Maybe not now, thanks to Biden's economy. <laughs> Sorry, not talking politics on the Outdoor Channel. Just kidding, I am still the common sense conservative. Just don't tell anybody because lefties like nature and maybe I can make money doing this. Oh, I miss the big channel. <laughs> so much. Uh, I was going to show you guys. There's a whole gaggle of lions. They're all just kind of hanging out all together. and They're pretty far away. Now the sun's dipping below the dike behind me and not going to be able to see him very well. Thought that eagle was going to take out a pelican. Pelicans don't seem too worried about the eagles. I don't think I would be either. They're pretty big birds. Some more sand hill cranes flying over. You're not joking. Um, most of the places that memories were made are now just that. They're just memories anymore. Like, it's, it's funny because, like, I'm not quite 40 yet, you know, but I'm kind of getting tired of going, man. I remember when that was farmlander. I remember when you used to be able to go over here and catch fish. The number one best sturgeon hole on the lower Columbia River is now private property for like a homeless camp. I mean, they're not really homeless. Like they own the property. They just live in a trailer and that's how they want to live, which is no big deal. Uh, but I mean, it's like a junkyard and it's gross. But, uh, it used to be, you know, you could go camping down there and you could, you know, have parties down there and stuff like that. And um, now it's just blocked off. They got concrete barriers blocking it off and you can't go back there at all. Or if you do, you're probably going to get shot. And uh, it sucks. Lots of like stream access. There's a, the, there's a river up the upper Lewis called the Muddy River. And uh, the mouth of the Muddy is amazing. Like, I love going up there. I used to guide people up there all the time. It's great walking. You can spend, like, the whole day on the river and up and back down again. And it's a gorge. It's just, it's, it's amazing. But it's all private property now. Up in the middle of nowhere. Up in the, up in the, um, 
Mount St. Helens monument area. But through some stupid DNR lease, somebody was able to purchase property. Now you can't get there anymore. I'm talking like you're two hours away from the freeway. Like you're in the middle of the Cascades. Go oh, Pelican taking off. Get my camera ready in case the rest of them do. Oh, they're so far away. I think I'm gonna start a. I'm gonna start a um, give send go for a new camera. I need to upgrade really bad. Oh, well, you want to talk about not having enough money to play. Uh, talk about how the entire um, warehouser land is now off limits to public access. Their entire, one of their, their main clauses on their original leases with DNR was that, you know, warehouser can operate this land, but it has to be open for public access. Now you have to buy a permit to access public lands, DNR lands, taxpayers' lands. When they started doing that, I, I couldn't believe it. I'm like, that's illegal. Like, it's part of their contract. Part of the terms of their lease stated public use. And they're like, oh, people go up there and they're cutting firewood illegally and blah, blah, blah. Okay, well, have... You know, have security up there. That's fine. The gamies, even now, all they do is spend time on warehouser land to make sure nobody's going up there trespassing and quote unquote poaching on private property. <clears throat> it's like 300 bucks for a gate key and you only have a tiny little area to go into. It's, it's, it's ridiculous. And now all the other ones took the same path, not just warehouser anymore, whatever little Longview fiber land is still open, still out there. PPNL has it for certain areas. Like if you want to limit uh, vehicle traffic, fine. Live, you know, limit your vehicle traffic, keep the gates closed, but don't be stopping people from walking in. Fifteen-minute prison. What are you talking about Willis? Well, sun's going down. <laughs> Gotta guard the crown's land, you bet. They are one of the largest revenue producers in Washington, so during tooting, you gotta give them what they want. Oh, yeah, I saw that. That's why they're uh, that's why they're putting in all those brand new bus stations now, all the bus stops. They're putting in all these new bus stops all up and down like Mill Plain for their electric buses. <laughs> it's such a waste of money. Don't get it. I'll watch the sun sit here for a little bit while we're uh, waiting for some more salamons. Nope, sea lions? Wow. See, you got me thinking about salmon now. 
actually. I'm going to go. I'm going to head up there. Pardon the shakiness. Give me a moment while I climb. The homeless crime transportation system. Oh, you bet. 100%. That's why they want to build the uh, Max, their light rail to go from Portland to Vancouver. And yet everybody has said no multiple times. Windier up here. There you go. We got some river. Got some sunset. I'll be right back. God, I left my sunroof open. <laughs> Oops. Some more sea lions coming back. Hey, beer guy! Oh, he's my favorite conductor. Eh? Long time no jibber jabber, there, fella. Glad to see you haven't been put in the gulag yet for misgendering somebody. Proud of you. Or am I? Messed your back running away from the Mounties there, eh? <laughs> I just think it's funny they try to be sneaky with their red coats. <laughs> All right, we get back here to filming the sunset and chit chatting. Pretty. Pretty far away from them, there are sea lions to 
didn't really film much. It's cold. And that Bernie, especially with those uh, power lines in there. Oh yeah, you bet. You bet. Well, what's cool about that though, Vancouver has an unusually high number of massage parlors. Yes, they do. Wait, which one? Vancouver, Washington, or Canada? Because I think they both do. Even though Vancouver, Canada, they got other problems there. They got they got some Yakuza problems. As well. Of an organized crime thing. Vancouver, Washington, uh, they just got, uh, they got a Russian mafia problem. Not really a problem. They don't really do anything. Portland's got Asian stuff going on, organized. Hey, don't you talk about Vancouver, Washington going to crap and the homeless problem in Vancouver, Washington. They fixed that. They took out a transit center on, I want to say it was uh, 136th and 18th Street, and they made it a homeless camp, a permanent homeless camp. It's got bathrooms, it's got showers, it's got a fence around it, and it's got one of those cool police towers that, you know, doo -doo -doo -doo, watch everything. And uh, so the homeless problem in Vancouver has been solved. Don't you know? Vancouver, Canada, however, Been there once. I've been to uh, my only trip into the Great White North uh, happened many moons ago, and uh, I went to Vancouver. And uh, the, I gotta say, the people there—they were not the friendly Canadians you see on TV. None of them reminded me of Ryan Reynolds at all. Uh, they were—they were rude. <laughs> they were snippy. They were, they were, they, they must have known that I was an American because I don't know how, uh, but uh, they did not seem to like me there. I don't know why. Definitely not what I saw on TV. I mean, I'll be honest, like I can understand how, how they could be miserable. a lot of people that lived in Alberta. Come to find out, not all of Canada is a bunch of communists. <laughs> Most of Canada, the landmass, aren't. They're a bunch of red-blooded, freedom-loving people that just get screwed just like we do. But uh, yeah, in Vancouver. It's like, it's like they want to be like Toronto, but they know that they never will be, and so they're just sad about it and angry and want to just make everybody else around them miserable too. Is that a pretty accurate assessment there, fair guy? Like they want to be Toronto, they want to be Ottawa, but uh, there's like 3,000 miles between them and the next major city, and so they're just like, ah, we'll be like Seattle, but angry. No one wants to be like Toronto. <laughs> Are you sure? <laughs> Toronto's like the Juarez of of Canada. <laughs> yeah, there really were a lot of Asians in Vancouver, BC. That was weird. It's very dicey in deep snow, especially since it's usually one of the last places that the county will ever come out and plow. It's even more fun though when it isn't snowy and it's just icy. Because then you're just like, well, I'm going to go whichever direction that rock in the road tells me to go. Freezing rain? Nope, you just stay home.
that wind is chilly. It's so cool, you know, watching something and then like, you know, talking and all of a sudden you hear somebody say, man, it's cold as you're like, not cold. And you're just like, oh, why is he complaining? Because it's cold here. <laughs> That's why. Not complaining, just stating an actuality. This bit will be cool, will be cool to time lapse, especially if we can get a nice blast of sun before it goes over the mountains. Those clouds clear away in time. The moral of that story is we might be sitting here for a while. <laughs> Are you guys on my Telegram channel yet? And if you're not, why? Why not? That is my question for you. Beer guy. Tia and the baby are doing absolutely amazing. Zeta is ginormous. She is 11 months old today. Today, 11 months old. And uh, she is... She is wearing like 2T clothes. <laughs> she is massive. She not she's not like Michelin Michelin man massive. She's like she's tall. She's really tall and she's got thighs for days. And see, if you guys were on my Telegram channel, <coughs> you would have seen pictures of her and you guys would see how they're doing. But no. No. It's been like I haven't been able to like talk to you guys for how long and and wow, it's hurtful. Telegram is a amazing app. It's a messenger app uh, that you can actually have like a channel on and broadcast stuff with. Um, all of my content goes there. Like if I make a meme, it goes there. If I do videos, it goes there. Uh, if I'm doing something on Twitter, some of it goes there. Um, it's pretty much my one-stop shop for everything. That way, people don't miss out. Um, the link should be in the description of this video, and it should. You can get the app for your phone. You can get the app for your computer. Um, it's pretty nice. Flip phone. <laughs> you can get it on your computer. funny on my telegram channel <laughs> we were uh we were discussing recently the um the glory days before the internet and how i mentioned how i admittingly cannot wait for the day we get emp'd and technology goes away like i'll miss it but at the same time like as somebody who's old enough to remember the days before the internet, the days before, well, before personal computers were in every house. <laughs> uh, yeah, those were, those were good times. Life was simpler. People weren't as crappy. Or maybe they were, but you just couldn't see them. <laughs> you didn't know about them. He had to work harder to harass people. Yes, a lot more time outside and you knew your neighbors. It's so funny um, talking to like my wife and like younger people and, and telling stories about, you know, what it was like, you know, growing up in the eighties, <laughs> like, yeah. When I, when I was when I was six years old, we moved to Washington. Uh, before then, I lived in Gresham, Oregon. And so from from one to five, I was there. I have distinct memories of riding my bicycle all through our neighborhood, going over to a friend's house, you know, like, okay, mom, I'm gonna go to 
my friend's house. They're like three blocks and down that way and a couple blocks this way and and just going, riding my bike. Going to my friend's house. That was probably, I don't know, maybe three or four, four or five blocks away. And uh, <laughs> you know, nowadays they're like, no, -uh. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah, that was at five years old. All right, have fun, bye, we'll see you later. We didn't have all of that fear of your kid's gonna get abducted. And then we moved up here. I mean, when I was six, seven, and eight, my dad would take me in a, take me and drop me off way upstream in a little four person raft and I'd float down the river and fish it. By myself, <laughs> younger than 10 years old, just floating down the river. Yeah, now it's play dates and you have to do a Facebook stock and you gotta like do a background check and you gotta make sure that they're not too close to a sex offender and blah, 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 blah. And man, it's just, it sucks. Like the 21st century, I, so far, I am not impressed with. I'm just, I'll just put it out there. I am not impressed with the 21st century. Oh, being a kid today? What do you mean it sucks being a kid today? You know, being a kid today, you're sitting there in front of a TV screen watching stupid kids play with stupid toys on YouTube, <laughs> watching cat videos or sitting on TikTok like you're a screen baby. Our baby, our amazing, beautiful, little 11-month-old baby, <laughs> she is getting to the point now where she's like, give me a phone. We don't let her. Right? We don't let her play with it. We, we, when we sit there and like FaceTime somebody, like she'll sit there and she'll talk on it, but she wants that phone. We never let her have it. I let her have it the other day, uh, two days ago. For the first time, I was like, here, record yourself. It's going to be cute. And then I'm like, okay, you're done. And I took it away from her. <laughs> and she, it was the first tantrum that she straight up threw. Like she's been like, you know, irritated with us before, but she has never thrown like an absolute fit. And I'm like, holy crap, dude. 10 seconds of screen time and you're an addict already? Like this is not acceptable behavior. And now it's like, you just don't, we try our best to just kind of not be on our phones around her because you know, she sees us being on it and then she wants it. She wants to be a part of that. Um, you know, she doesn't do anything with it. She just sits there and looks at it and tries to eat it. But you know, she just sees that. That's one of the reasons why honestly, like lately I've been thinking more along the lines of, man, just let technology go away. <laughs> just let it go away. I'll miss it for about a week. And then I won't anymore. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe I will. I don't know. We'll see when they drop the EMP off the next weather balloon that comes flying across. See, yep, that's another thing. Let the safety crap. Like any Gen Xer and and cuspers, like most of them, even if they lived in in the city and were raised in the city, most of them still know what it was like driving around all the time without a seatbelt on and or riding in the back of a pickup truck through town or like going on vacation and having your dad put the canopy on the back of the truck and you're just riding down wherever you're going 70 miles an hour in the bed of a pickup truck just bouncing around with snacks <laughs> you know like we survived <laughs> we we made it we did okay we did pretty good maybe they didn't do that stuff in Canada you know maybe you guys you guys invented the seatbelt up there I'm sure they a bunch of fascists Like, yep, yeah, got these new horseless carriages. Them Yanks. They're 
having too much freedom. Let's strap them in. <laughs> no, I know. Yeah, you know, and that's funny too, because like you know, I'm talking to my first exposure being in in uh, Vancouver, BC, is my first exposure to Canadians. It was not pleasant at all. And then my second exposure was um, the you know the guys from Alberta. They're a bunch of blue collar, just awesome people. <laughs> I was, I was shocked. I was like, oh, you're just like me. <laughs> you're my people. <laughs> I didn't know you existed. Did Tucker invent the seatbelt? I don't know. Tucker has done everything bad according to the news, according to the media machine. Tucker's the blame for everything. Yep, can't wait to get the boat going. Little 12 foot aluminum boat. The car maker? There's a car maker named Tucker? Oh, yes. <laughs> Sorry. That's a long time ago. Yeah, I know. I got you. I got you. I think you're right. <laughs> I thought you were being funny. Is Fox News even allowed up there? Do you guys have to watch Sky News? Which, I mean, don't get me wrong, Sky News has been blowing stuff up lately. All you guys get to watch are uh, local CNN and ABC affiliates. They don't even let you watch CNN Global. <laughs> Run some lines. Yeah. Oh, they don't do, they don't do lines up here. Actually, though, I've never done a trout line before myself. I was going with net lines because that's where my mind always goes when uh, people say you're going to go run lines because that's what people do in the gorge as they go and run lines. Anyway, but uh, I've never done a trout line ever before. Oh, that'd be cool. I've seen it on TV. Just makes me feel weird that like if a fish gets on there and then He's on there for a while, like, is it still good? I don't know, it weirds me out. I like being able to watch my fish die. That's why I don't buy fish at the store. Who knows how long it was sitting in the gill net before it was, you know, brought aboard. <laughs> Just realized I was still wearing my sunglasses. No wonder people driving by was looking at me funny. I can see clearly now The glare is gone <laughs> Oh Brick fishing Isn't that illegal now? Running lines out? I know up at Bonneville they used to use um, little electric electric boats, little row control boats, but uh, they put a stop to that. I think there's no more, no more line assisting. such a rebel. <clears throat> kayaks. I think kayaks you can get away with it. 
because uh because it's not it's not assisted you're still doing it on your own i guess you could row it out yeah. heck yeah it does being able to put it wherever you want especially in the columbia you bet getting it out there cool thing at the dam um at the dam these guys would build these um, giant slingshots they were pretty impressive you just send them out you don't see casting reels doing that let it go rat nest ah. well i think i'm going to call it go home and give my little 11 month old a bath you two need to get on telegram jack i know you got a computer get it i have a computer app i know you're on your computer right now because flip phones don't show YouTube. <laughs> so there. And uh, I'm gonna go home and yes, it has been. It's been good. I like. I miss this. I miss this a lot. Are there still flag waves? Uh, yes, they're still doing the flag waves at um, at Richfield every Sunday at 2. Um, I cannot make it to those anymore because usually I'm trying to make some money on those days, on that day. But, um, and I, I guess there's still a flag wave going on somewhere in Portland or uh, Oregon City, Clackamas area. Um, not Portland, but same thing. Like, I just can't afford to get too many places. And if I, you know, have no potential to make anything on it, like gas money or anything to get to it, then it's it's unfortunately a uh, very low on the totem pole. Which I mean, I don't make even the, the last few events that I have gone out and covered. Like I don't I haven't made anything on it. Um, I don't have a monetized way to go. But uh, yeah, I'm going to be using this channel more. I'm going to be live streaming stuff uh, right before the snow hit I was going to go up and live stream in the mountains going like a hike or something and just kind of live stream out there but I'm going to do I'm going to do a lot more live streaming and content on this and you know if I can grow it then cool and if I can't then figure it out but uh, it was nice talking to you guys this was nice I like Hopefully, I can talk to you guys on Telegram here, like in a little bit. <laughs> Alright guys, I'll see you later. Ta-ta for now.